How to encourage risk taking in research, meaning how can you take greater risks and how can we as teams encourage people to take greater risks when they plan research. Now in science and research we're typically terrified of failure and of course high risk means by necessity and by definition the possibility of failure. We fear failure of course for good reason because of the waste of time and resources and energy and the general pain it brings. Now failure comes in two flavors to make this clear from the beginning. There is one type of failure in routine work which happens because a mistake occurred and this is just irritating and the other type of failure is the one that I'm talking about here when you really tried something fundamentally new and that was the high risk and that didn't work. So it's more of a positive failure if you will because it happened while you tried something new and very interesting and novel and it is this second type of failure that happens because it tried something new that we should really tackle how we deal with that in our daily lives and in our teams. We should really try to cherish these kinds of productive failures because they happened en route to trying something truly novel. Now of course this is all easier said than done but we all know that there are some systemic hurdles to trying very high risk stuff. It starts with the expectation of continued output for example but also with the general aversion of funding agencies to support something that is fairly high risk um, except for very specialized programs. Now we can solve this here in this video this will be a much longer process but in this video I want to talk about what you can do and what we can do in our teams to maybe make risk taking and the ensuing failures basically more attractive. Now the first one pertains more to education basically to start fairly early on in our university education in the courses that we teach to make clear that the scientific process basically can also entail dead ends and failures because we don't, right? I mean, when we currently teach labs, we make sure that everything works and has been tested out, generally speaking, and everything is basically out of the can, just out of fear that things don't work in your class and that therefore it reflects badly on you or it creates an awkward situation. Whereas maybe what we could try, not in all courses, of course, but in, in some courses, maybe more advanced courses, upper division undergraduate or master's level courses, we could try to allow failures to happen. Now I tried this um, many years ago, actually I've been trying it regularly in one of my master's courses where I give them a new idea to work on during the lab to develop and then basically set up as an experiment. And that has been an interesting experience because I think some people really love it. And, but other people are quite irritated when they find that this doesn't work, right? Because they have basically never before really experienced that in their previous coursework. So I think this is something that we could do fairly easily without a revolution in the science system. We could just basically infuse the possibility of failure by having people doing something relatively new and untested in lab exercises in our university level courses. The second thing is something you can do in teams which is value these unsuccessful attempts in the pursuit of something cool. Um, now we don't really do that yet in our lab and we've tried it <laughs> and people were sort of nah, not too thrilled about it to hear about other people's failures right because it is so negative and also people are not too ready to share their failures because it basically puts them on the spot. But somehow we need to work on that and make this uh, sharing of failures a little bit more attractive and to show also that we cherish that attempt and we value the work that went into that because now maybe some of these doors have been closed but that in itself is also valuable information in your pursuit of something entirely new. And this really requires completely we change how we do our lab meetings for example because we our lab meetings are focused on success right everybody is excited to share their successful completion of experiments and uh, nobody really shares their lack of success or their failures. That can be one step towards that that we have tried is when people presented their um, fantastic experiments or celebrate a paper that they've recently published and shared with the lab then they also weave into that success story the pathway to it and basically explain some of the things that didn't work too well. This is more palatable to people because basically it's all 
wrapped up in a success story, which is what we're used to. But in the beginning, you give people sort of a bit of a taste of the failures that were necessary on that route towards that success. I think this is something that we can fairly easily do and I think that would work well. The third point is how do we weave these high-risk projects really into our work as a team or your work as an individual because we all have like grants and projects to deliver on. But the way to do that is clearly with side projects. And so everybody in the lab is encouraged to do side projects and very many people do. And with these side projects, people can really explore more high-risk questions. So, the, of course, it's important that they still deliver on the grant. So, this is something like on top, when work on the grant progresses really well, then this creates time for people to pursue also some other interesting questions. And, of course, these, these kinds of side projects, they are definitely allowed to fail, right? Because we, are, we don't really have to report on them. Uh, and this doesn't impede progress in a, in a grant, for example. So the side projects are really the avenues towards being very creative. And what many people don't realize is that, of course, it is pretty difficult to come up with a very, very good idea. This is the most difficult thing. And so to come up with really creative ideas, I think you need to create the space for it. So, you know, you need to have breaks and you need to have your mind work on something. And we should also normalize that. People have done something like this in the lab. Um, several years ago, we started with that, where we read a paper about how to become more creative. And, and one of the points mentioned in that paper was that you should go on walks and maybe um, make, an, make an appointment with somebody else that you wouldn't normally talk to in the lab to go on that walk with you. And so we're right next to the botanical garden here. And so people um, very regularly went on these lunch walks where they talked about well, what they do um, and also exchanged ideas. Now, we haven't really followed up if this has led to more creative ideas, but I think it seems like a very good route forward because it creates sort of more, it, it, it integrates downtime basically into your daily routine because you cannot go full power in the lab and in writing and then expect um, you get these ideas, you know, you need to create basically space for these ideas to happen. Yeah, I think these are some of the ideas that may lead to teams as a whole or individuals engage with more high-risk projects that entail the possibility of failure. And I think this will be, a, <laughs> will be difficult to implement. I have, I have no doubts about it. But I think it's also going to be quite important because it is through these high-risk projects that we really change things that we really move science for, forward. And so therefore, I think it is important to really think about that. And so with that, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you what your ideas are, are to be more creative in the lab and to make people less afraid of failures by pursuing high-risk projects. So if you have ideas and thoughts and also experiences, please share them in the comments. Bye.